and welcome to Plants for Table. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Today's video is about maintenance of the eye harvest. I've had this eye harvest for a bit more than three months now. I grew a lot of kale, tatsoi, celery leaves, and other greens like lettuce. I harvested them many times, and I was very happy with the result. I did another video about this system for the 10-week update. If you have not seen it, please check it out in the description box below for the link. Because I want to experience something different than uh, just the lettuce green, like um, I want to grow eggplants and cucumbers in this eye harvest for the next crop, so I decided to gut out this whole system and then uh, start from new. I want to quickly show you how I remove the plants from the system. This is tap soy, a uh, bok choy family. Usually when I harvest, I just harvest the leaves and then trim the roots. Because I'm disposing the plant, I cut the roots all the way to the net cup so that I can pull the plants out more easily. And for the net cup, I will rinse them out and then remove all the leftover roots and then put everything into the dishwasher. That way, any algae or pests will be cleaned up. Now, not the so fun part. Let's clean up the system. First of all, use water to damp a cloth towel or a paper towel and clean out the debris and algae stick onto the system. Next, I'm using hydrogen peroxide to damp the uh, paper towel and then clean up the system one more time. Don't forget to clean the trellis. Just a little work and they look new again. Next, we are going to clean up the water reservoir. You can see this is the filter that catch a lot of uh, debris and then they have some overgrown roots growing into the filter, which is good because it will prevent the roots to block up the um, water pump in the bottom. I'm disposing the roots and then clean up this filter. Now I need to take out this water and then uh, replenish with new water. To make my life easier, I'm just using a sump pump to pump out all the water in the reservoir. I'm also using this sump pump to pump back the water into all my hydroponic system. Order one and you'll thank me for it. I'm replacing the whole water tank just because I'm starting a new crop. But if you're still having your lettuce and whatever plants up there, um, you just have to top off the water and then add in nutrients every week or so. Let's clean these up with hydrogen peroxide and the paper towel. We always have several uh, buckets of tap water set aside uh, for several days to use for our hydroponic systems and also for our fish tank. I'm just pumping the water back in. I recommend you to fill up the water half or two thirds of the tank instead of all the way to the top. The reason is that when you add in the nutrient, and if the level is too high, you can always add in water to dilute it. I'm starting to like the eye harvest system a lot comparing to Gardein now, just because the reservoir is uh, big enough so that I can maneuver around. And then also you can see in the water, I added a wave maker. I know, I know, it's for <laughs> a fish tank. But I use it so that the water keep running and um, it stirred up the nutrient in the water all the time so that the water is always clear and full of oxygen, which is really really good for your plants. 
I'm just using the uh, pH meter to measure the pH level of the water. Usually tap water runs around 7.5 to 8, as expected. I took out the net cups from the dishwasher and now um, it's time to plant new seeds. I'm growing cucumbers and uh, two types of eggplants, the fairy tale eggplants and the callop eggplants. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. This grow medium is the same as rabbit rooters that came with the eye harvest. It's just much smaller. I use them because I have so many of these. I have to use them up, you know. I do prefer rabbit rooters over this one though, just because it's more stable. Everything sprout nicely after 10 days. You can see that I'm spacing out my eggplants so that they have um, some room to grow. Then I use a piece of foam to cover up the unused net cups. That way algae does not get into the water. If you do not have a cover for the net cup, you can use aluminum foil to wrap around it to cover it. It's also time to put in the nutrient and then adjust the pH level of your water. Let's see what the pH meter tells us. 7.95, which is very normal for the water in my city. I'm going to show you a more accurate way of uh, measuring your pH level in the water. A lot of people complain that the pH meters that we buy off of Amazon often are not accurate. I'm going to use the pH indicator to see how acidic or alkaline the water is. Lower pH level means the water is more acidic in nature. Higher value means um, it is more alkaline. Without turning this video into a chemistry lesson, just keep in mind that in general, plants perform best between pH level 5.5 and 6.5. By the way, all the gadget I'm using right now um, provided by iHarvest when you purchase the system, which is another reason why I like iHarvest because they provided you everything to start um, a successful system like the uh, pH up, pH down, the pH test indicator, and the whole test kit right here. Fill the reservoir water into the test tube halfway and then add 3 drops of the pH test indicator. Like so. Swirl gently for the indicator to mix in with the water or tap like so. Then match your color with the one on the bottle. Each number corresponding with um, the color. Let's see. I think our color is close to 8.5. What do you think? Yeah, it's 8.5. But the um, pH meter previously told us that our water is 7.95. I mean, it's off by 0.5, which is not a deal breaker. But once in a while, just to confirm that my pH meter is still working properly, I always use this one. I'm using pH down to adjust my water to pH 6. Because I've done this before, so I kind of know how much of the pH down solution to add into my reservoir. I recommend you to start off with 1 ml of solution for each of the gallon of water. Let it mix in and then come back later to remeasure. Do it over and over until you get to the number that you want. And of course, if your pH level is too low, you can use the pH up and do the same way.
and this is TDS meter used to measure the nutrient inside the water. This is just tap water and it's reading at 289 ppm just because even I haven't added any nutrient in the water but there are still particles in the water that's why the TDS meter picked it up because I'm growing cucumber and eggplants in the same system I have to uh, find a ppm that works both for the plant which is around 2000 ppm I'm using maxi grow that comes with the iHarvest system uh, when I purchase it in general you will use one teaspoon of nutrient for every gallon of water because half of my plants are still in the sprouting stage I'm just going to use half of the dosage recommended on the uh, label I have about seven gallons of water right here so I'm just going to use four teaspoons I'll just let the wave maker mix up the nutrient for me I'll come back after a couple hours to measure the ppm again and then after a couple days I will adjust up the nutrient level Wow this video is much longer than I expected anyhow thank you so much for watching and um, if you have any questions or comments please drop me a line and I will surely get back to you as soon as I can and also please do not forget to subscribe to my channel for future videos as a bonus I'm showing you my fish tank because I keep mentioning about the wave maker and the fish <laughs> have a good day guys I'll see you in the next episode